The Shellbot SL60 is a new robot vacuum from Shellbot Life, who are themselves new to the robot vacuum space. It packs some pretty serious features, such as 4,000 pascals of suction, AI, object recognition and avoidance, and a very long battery life. It uses LiDAR navigation, is capable of smart mapping, and has a pretty good app that is bug-free and works really well. Now, this is not the first new company that has sent me their uh, brand new robot vacuum, but this is the first one that I've actually reviewed because the others were not exactly ready for prime time. This one is actually extremely reliable, uh, works very well, has some pretty good object recognition. But before I start talking about this robot, I would like to make a request of my viewers. Um, Smart Robot Reviews, which is a channel run by a woman who used to live in the Ukraine but has now had to leave the country due to the invasion, um, is an excellent robot vacuum channel. Uh, she makes fantastic videos that are actually a lot better and more professional than mine. And uh, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to her channel and watching her videos, that would help her a lot and I'd be very grateful. Thank you. And so let's get to the hard floor cleaning tests. So the first thing you'll notice is that there is some exhaust uh, that's blowing around some of the dog hair, but um, it's not bad and it's not actually moving them very far. So some thought was given to um, avoiding uh, the common problems that some robot vacuums have with their exhaust. So as you can see here, it's an excellent hard floor cleaner. It's picking up all of the large, medium, and very fine debris and all of the dog hair, and it doesn't really blow anything or kick anything around very much. Even on one pass, it did a really good job. On two passes, it got pretty much the whole thing. So this was outside of its clean zone, but inside of its clean zone, did a really good job. I think this is just a little bit of flour stuck in the crack. So yeah, very good job. Um, Every robot has a problem with my dishwasher. It wants to go around to some part of it. I don't know why, but this one was no exception, but did leave some stuff along the very edge, probably because it doesn't want to get deep uh, under the kitchen cabinets, but yeah, really good job. All right, so I'm gonna break one of my own rules and review this mop even though it's not like a any kind of vibrating or spinning mop it is a pretty decent system for a, a uh, something that just drags a wet pad around i like its its y uh, shaped mopping pattern i like the fact that it spins i don't know if you noticed that but when it first started it spun in circles I'm not sure why it does that but i think it's to saturate the mopping pad evenly with water so that it gets uh, wider coverage and of course, this is not gonna get the milk out, I can tell you that right now, but, um, and that milk is like half dry, half wet. But um, as far as picking up dust and stuff, this is one of the better um, wet wipe draggers out there, probably because of that spinning and because of the Y pattern. All right, it's dry, so the results are about what you'd expect. There's a ton of the milk still left here, you could feel it, you could see it. Uh, as far as the, I mean, you know, this is not a real mop per se. It, it's one of these that drags a wet pad around, but it's not terrible. Um, for the type of mop, it's actually pretty good because the, the dust and stuff, it, it did a good job of picking up. So this is one of the better um, wet pad draggers on the market. But to get uh, any kind of real mopping, you need something that either vibrates or spins or somehow agitates the surface. And none of these robots do that. All right, so in this carpet test, I've got dog hair, cat hair, um, red pepper flakes, these little black seeds, and some oregano, which I can't really see, so I'm probably not going to use that again. And I guess I could see a little of it, but it's really too close to the color of this carpet. So that's why I use the pepper flakes. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to run the robot over this carpet on maximum suction twice. And then we're going to take a very close look at what it gets and what it leaves behind. So I set this robot on um, two cleaning passes, and it doesn't really make two passes on this carpet. It, it does um, navigate very well, and if you set it on two passes on a room, 
uh, it, it'll do two passes. But here on um, a small area, which is its zone cleaning feature, which I'll talk about in the app, it only kind of sort of does two passes and, and only by overlapping. So it misses some areas. All right, let's get down in there. Um, as you can see, it did a really good job for the most part. Um, only a couple of those little black seeds are in there. It picked up um, almost everything else that it passed over, did a very good job with this carpet. Uh, it did miss this area here where it didn't quite um, overlap it the way it was supposed to. But then I did want this to do two passes, which is what I normally do in my carpet test. So we're gonna send it out for one more pass. And it pretty much got everything on the second pass uh, the way it is supposed to. So this is actually a very good carpet cleaner. It got nice and deep into the fibers, as I'm about to show you, and um, performed about as well as any other machine I've ever tested. Although, because I'm now using actual medium pile carpeting, I'm going to have to rerun some of these tests just to make sure. But I did test this with... Um, some of my better carpet cleaning robots, uh, you know, just to see how it would go on real carpet. And uh, this is one of the better ones. I don't actually know any robot that will like definitely night and day clean better than this one. So very good hard floor cleaner, very good with carpets. And um, not completely useless um, mop. So that's uh, well ahead of the game in this, in this price point. So as you can see, it navigates around chair legs well. Um, it actually has good navigation in general. I've used this robot for a long time and it's never had a problem, you know, finding things or navigating its way into or out of tricky spaces. All right, so now let's look at object avoidance. And we're gonna start with pet waste. Now, like a lot of laser um, sensor robots, this is not very good at detecting um, and avoiding pet waste. So this scored uh, one out of four. So basically if you have large dogs um, that make large turds, it's gonna avoid them pretty well. But anything small, um, it will misfire and run them over. So I would not recommend this for pet waste. However, regular object avoidance is actually um, the best I've ever tested for a pure laser sensor system. And it only um, got hung up on one of these. Uh, here we've got, you know, two different color cords because for some reason, even with lasers, the color of the cord makes a difference. We've got a sock and we've got a sneaker. So it completely avoided everything except this black cord, which it got stuck on. But overall, um, object avoidance for non-pet waste is very good. Uh, for pet waste is not that great. Okay, so this is the robot. It's a pretty attractive design. It's got nice uh, blue LEDs that change to orange when it's going back to its dock and charging. These are laser sensors in the front. I thought they were cameras at first because this is an um, object avoiding robot, but they're lasers. And um, it's got the typical LiDAR dome. The dust bin comes out in a hinged manner the way that the Roomba um, i7 or J7 does. There's two ways to open it. You can get it through the filter here, or you could open it like this to dump it. The, um, the mop attachment, the mop attaches here, so you could change it, clean it, clean the pad. This is a nice um, way that it slips over here so it won't fall off. The rest of it is typical Velcro. Clicks into place like this, and then you just uh, put water in here. And it is a um, pump system. So down here is a fairly typical arrangement. You've got um, your typical hybrid brush. And this is fairly resistant to fur clumps. Actually, it's very resistant to fur clumps. Um, but it does okay with hair tangles. But, but hair tangles aren't really a big deal unless you get a ton of them. Um, because uh, it's only a problem if it stops you know, um, debris from being sucked into the extraction ports. You could have a lot of hair wrapped around here. If it's thin human hair, then it doesn't really matter until it gets to be like a whole lot. But if you have fur clumped all over the place, that will stop um, stuff from getting in. So it's good with fur, so-so with hair. Um, and that's that's about it for this robot. It's, it's very typical, uh, you know, in, in most senses. But it is well built. Uh, it's a quality machine, 
and I really like it. All right, so before I get into the app, let's take a look at this quick mapping feature. So when you first um, get this in your house and you tell it to go out and uh, map, it doesn't do a full cleaning run. It actually just moves around to all the various nooks and crannies of your house and builds a map very quickly. I love this feature. It's, it's my favorite feature. Um, they've started introducing it on a lot of robots recently, and any robot that doesn't have it uh, I, makes me like angry. Like, why? Why wouldn't you put this feature into your robot? It's really cool, and any LiDAR robot is capable of doing this. So you can watch it just move around. You know, it's not cleaning. It's just going everywhere, scanning everything, making the map. And this takes about... Um, less than 10 minutes. I mean, I guess it depends on your house and how complicated your floor plan is. For my house, it's less than 10 minutes, and then you can immediately start customizing the map. Uh, my first modern vacuum robot was a Roomba um, i7, and that took like four hours or more to map my house and took multiple runs. So um, you can imagine how much I love something that can do this. So the app itself is very well made. It's attractive, um, bug-free. I haven't really run into any bugs. The translation is good. Um, it's got your typical features like, um, you know, picking uh, rooms, specific rooms to clean, um, multiple rooms, one room, you could see it highlighting the rooms. Um, it's got a uh, zone cleaning where um, you pick a, you, a zone and you can resize it and then you know move it to wherever you want. You can't save the zone or name it or anything like that, but this app is, is basic. It's, it's just, uh, it's got all the features you need, just not, none of the fancy ones. Um, I've got this thing cleaning um, one specific room in my house, that, that hallway where my cat litter box is, like five or six times a day, and it's been going for over a month. Uh, and it's never failed to do a cleaning run. It's never given me any issues or bugs. It's, it's about as reliable as the uh, Dream Z10, which is remarkable. Uh, for robot vacuums, you can see how many times it's gone out and cleaned without a single hitch. I've basically come to trust this, and I'm going to keep it around as my cat litter area cleaning robot. And because that's all it cleans, uh, I never have to really empty the dustbin, except maybe like once a month. Um, it's got all kinds of uh, carpet avoidance and recognition features, carpet boost. Um, you can turn uh, intelligent uh, object avoidance off because that does make the navigation a little wonky sometimes. It's got two different mopping patterns that you could use. Uh, it's, it's got, like I said, pretty much everything that you would need um, in such an app. I like the little graphics. Um, usually um, these look a lot uh, less interesting, but uh, like I said, they did a very good job making this app attractive. This, it's got this leveling feature, which is I've never had to use, but if you have any issues with an unlevel house, maybe that'll help you. And one thing I really like is that the owner's manual is actually built into the app. So you can toss that as soon as you get it without reading it, and if you decide that you want to read it, you can always just open the app up. I forgot to mention the uh, spot cleaning feature that's down on the bottom right, and it's basically like zone cleaning, except that it doesn't let you... Um, resize the the spot you just you know press somewhere on the map and that's where it goes and cleans in that specific area it's kind of unnecessary but if you don't want to mess around with resizing and moving zones it, it does come in handy it does it can uh, handle multiple floor plans and you can set all kinds of um, cleaning options uh, including how many times you want it to clean you know which suction level how much water to use that sort of thing you can actually have um, it custom clean settings for each room um, map editing is pretty straightforward. One thing I like is that um, to divide the rooms, you basically just um, draw a line with your finger, which I'll show you in a sec. So here I'm going to divide this kitchen, and I just swipe with my finger, and it creates that line. So I don't have to like, drag and drop and reposition and all that. Now, it, it can be difficult sometimes. Here it's not letting me because I'm trying to divide it into another room rather than the wall. So it only lets you go wall to wall which again is, is normal. And of course you can merge, divide, and do all that kind of stuff. So that, that's pretty much it for the app. It, like I said, it's a basic app. It's got all the necessary features. Um, one thing I really like is the fact that you can just name the rooms whatever you want. It doesn't give you like five room types that it thinks that are the only rooms in your house. So if it does add a full suite of Google commands later, um, you'll be able to uh, take advantage of them. So uh, in closing, this is an extremely reliable, very good robot. Right now, with the, um, if you're watching this video when it comes out, there's a promotion that'll put this right around $300. Um, but even at around $400, it's uh, only a competitor, uh, 
well, its primary competitor, I should say, is like the Echovax T8. And um, honestly, I think this is a better robot. Uh, the Echovax T8, the robot itself is an extremely high quality robot, but the app is just ridiculous. It, it keeps torpedoing your map. It keeps deciding that, you know, you have new rooms, new uh, when it finds like a closet that you left open and it just nukes your entire map. Uh, makes like divisions in the map that aren't there, divides your rooms, and just it's it's ridiculously hard to use, um, and it's buggy. Uh, this this like I said is bug free, reliable, works very well, cleans as well as the Echovax, uh, recognizes objects as well as the Echovax, and costs a little bit less. Um, so I highly recommend this robot. Uh, I would definitely buy this over an Echovax T8. Um, or pretty much anything else out there in the three hundred to four hundred dollar price range. So thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Mike, and this is Mr. Rumbato.